Well, we're starting part two of the Fixit Felix, and we're going to start with the Marquee Plexi. And this is the one I got from uh, Tap Plastic. And uh, it's we ordered an uh, eighth of an inch thick plexi, and it turns out it's too thick. So I'm, I'm going to go ahead and cut another piece of plexi, and I'm going to use the, uh, I believe it's 332nd uh, that I used on the control panel. So uh, we're going to go ahead and cut a new piece of plexi. Okay, uh, what's the best way to cut plexiglass? Well, I guess there's many ways you can do it, but, but it's thin 332nd uh, plexiglass. Found the easiest way is use one of these cheap Harbor Freight uh, multi tools, and uh, right now it has the saw blade on it. And of course, it also comes with a sanding pads, so you can use it as a sander, finishing sander, and it works very good. Uh, what it does, it it vibrates back and forth real fast, and when it's vibrating, you can actually put your hand on it and it won't cut you but it, it'll cut through this plexiglass real, real nice. So what I did was I put the plexiglass on my table saw here just to use as a platform. And I put the, cutting out a marquee to fit a Donkey Kong cabinet. And I laid it on top of the plexi and lined up the edges. And then I put the old control panel wood on top of it and clamped it down. And I'm gonna use that as a guide for the saw blade and all you have to do is just make sure you keep it flat up against that wood and as, as you saw him, start up on the end and work your way back and it'll cut right through. Alright, well we're going to start with the short cut and then next we'll, after we cut this, we'll turn it around and do the long cut. all it is to it. Now we'll turn it around and align the long side. Okay, now we got it set up for the long cut, so we're just going to do the same thing, just a little bit longer of a cut.
into a little bit of a trouble there because I had the a uh, little bit too far inward and was on top of my saw table there. But anyway, still got a nice cut and it'll clean off real good. And uh, so we, now we have something we can work with. Okay, well, we've got the new piece of plexi on here, and this one fits perfect. So I would recommend uh, 3 16 plexi. So now we're going to do the same thing that we were going to do to, with the other one. We'll just take a magic marker, and we're going to draw a line right along the edge of the metal brackets. So we'll know our graphic can be centered in between that line. And put top on here so we know that's the top because one might sit a little lower than the other. So now what we gotta do is take it back out and see how the marquee uh, decal fits on it. Okay, well, the piece that I just cut out using the original Donkey Kong marquee as a template. I laid it on top of the piece of plastic that I had cut it, tap plastics, and it is identical. So the measurements that I gave them are correct as far as the outer dimensions. The only thing is that the thickness is different. Uh, eighth of an inch is just a little bit too thick. You can force it, but with the uh, protective paper or the decal, I'm sure it'll be a little too thick. So, now we got a proper size cut here. Now we can take our marquee decal. And first thing we're going to see, we'll line it up on the edge this way. Line it up this way. And it is the exact perfect width. So, there'll be no trimming needed. Uh, and it'll, it'll fit from edge to edge and that's good because the edge of the marquee it doesn't recess into anything it actually just lays against the inside edge of the cabinet so that'll work out fine now the part that I was concerned about is the height of it and as you can see the height uh, is a little short it's, it's not as wide or high as the marquee itself. But it doesn't have to be. And if you remember, I put these marks on here. So this black mark and this black mark are where the, um, the marquee rails, the edge of the marquee rails. So all I have to do is center the decal in between those two. And um, so. Um, I'll be able to put them on and the decal will be uh, hidden underneath the, the marquee rails. So all I have to do is, uh, because I want the entire logo here to show, I just want to make sure that I just get enough of the marquee rail so it, it doesn't cover it up. So. Um, If we split the difference and have the same amount on both sides, I think uh, we're going to be okay. So we'll just split the difference and have the same amount of plexi ov overlap on the top and the bottom, and that should put us right on the mark. Okay, well I've already showed you how I cut out the, the marquee for the uh, Fix-It Felix, and uh, now we're going to go ahead and install the overlay. Uh, for the marquee. Now I got this from Arcade Skin and um, I got a complete graphic set from them and this is uh, real nice work here. Um, I've already done the control panel and that came out nice. So now what we're going to do is uh, do this pretty simple. I'm going to have to take the uh, protective coating off of one side. I'm going to go ahead and leave the other side on until I'm ready to install it on the game. And this was a piece of plexiglass 
that I've probably had for the last 10 years. It was a full sheet and I never used it. And uh, I used part of it to uh, put a cover on the control panel. And it has the, the old type of uh, regular paper protection on it where the, the new stuff nowadays, most of it I've seen has the um, the translucent blue plastic, but uh, that's okay. Even though this has got some age to it, it's stuck on pretty good, but it, it seems to be coming off fairly well. I'm trying to pull it off without getting a whole lot of fingerprints on it. Okay. Now what we've got to do is line it up and we'll just sort of eyeball it about where we, where we think it should go. And we're going to put a piece of tape about the middle way here. Now if you go on Arcade Skin's website, he has a video that shows you how to do this the proper way. And uh, so I'm going to do it just a little bit different, but basically the same. He, he puts the tape in the middle here. He calls this, I believe, the hinge method. I uh, also want to put a piece on the end here. Keep it from sliding. No, it's not sticking for some reason. here just to be on the safe side. Okay, check our alignment again. And make sure we have it where we want it. Okay, I think that looks about right. So what we're going to do now is we're going to pull up this side and we're going to peel our backing off. Put our thumb right, right here and what we're going to do is we're going to tear this. Now we're going to start from the middle part where the tape is, hold, hold this piece up, and very slowly we're just going to, I'm going to take my thumb, uh, if you have a squeegee, you can use a squeegee, but I'll just take my, my thumb basically on fingers. And just very slowly work it down so that you don't get any air bubbles trapped underneath it. And this is pretty thick vinyl, so it, it lays down pretty good. And you can get air bubbles under it, but it's, you have to really be hard pressed to do that. Because it, it is so easy to work with. And like you say, if you have a squeegee, you can use a squeegee on this. But I find the fingers works just as good. Okay, now we have that side done. So what I'm going to do is, just for a little added safety, I'm just going to put a couple pieces of tape to hold this side from sliding around on the table. And take our tape off of the other side. And take the tape off. 
tape off of the middle. Now we just pull up our other side here and take our piece of backing, hold it up, and we'll do the same thing. Just slowly rub it down. Make sure you don't get any air bubbles under it. And if you do, you can always pull it up. But if you take your time, don't believe you'll have any problem with it. And then if you do have a squeegee, well, I'm sure that's even better because you're using a flat surface to squeegee it down. And of course the squeegee it looks like he's using one that has some type of uh, protection on the end of it to where it's not going to scratch the surface of, of the, uh, the marquee decal. In here. Now we can take this tape off. And that's basically all there is to it. Now we have our Fix It Felix marquee. And all we have to do now is peel the back side off when we're ready to install it in the game. Well now we're going to install the graphic for the monitor bezel. I've already taken the uh, piece of gray plexi which I got from Tap Plastic and put it on the game and made a line uh, where it sits down in the frame and also made a, a line up on the top side uh, where it sits in, in the top side. So that'll let me know where I need to position the, the graphic. So now I, I took the graphic and I went ahead and I trimmed the edge of the backing paper flush so I can line it up on the side and I did this on all four corners so, and I, I figured out that if I put the edge of the backing paper right on the bottom edge of the plexi, then the graphic is going to be just above the line of hair. And on the top side, it'll be just below the line of hair. So, uh, that'll give me my top to bottom centering. Then all I need to do is line it up so that I get the, it's going to have a little bit of space on the sides. The graphic doesn't quite come end to end. So I'm going to have to split the difference. And uh, it, it won't be noticeable, it'll, it'll be fine. And uh, once I, I line it up, then I'm going to put a piece of tape across it to, to hold it in place. And then we're going to do it something similar to uh, Arcade Skin did it on his uh, video, his installation video. We'll go ahead, once we have it flat so it can't move on the plexi, uh, we're going to go ahead and peel back about an inch or so and stick the bottom end down. And uh, then we'll 
we'll turn it around, tape it down again so it can't move. Then we'll peel the back off and uh, we'll have to grab the corners and sort of pull it out sort of like on a 45 degree angle to try to stretch it so that uh, we don't get any wrinkles because the center part here is is void, it's empty. Um, the, the bezel graphic is cut along the edges here so that makes it very difficult to try to stick down because it has to be exactly in its correct position for you to be able to get it flat all the way around and that's the, what poses a challenge. I don't think it's going to be that much uh, difficult but if you can all, all see already even on the backing paper it's already been raised up and, and sort of puffed up a little bit um, in a couple places and that's due to it being rolled up it was shipped rolled up instead of laying flat and anytime you have uh, any type of side art or anything that's rolled up for an extended period of time the uh, it, it sort of creeps on the backing paper and stretches a little bit so that when you unfold it you're going to get these little wrinkles but uh, it shouldn't be a problem at least we hope not and um, so we're going to go ahead and start the process now okay well the first thing we need to do We'll set the graphic aside and we need to peel our protective paper off and since I have this marked top and bottom uh, it really wouldn't matter as, as long as I got it oriented the right way because the dimensions aren't equal all the way around but uh, we're going to keep this as the top and this is the bottom and we'll go ahead and peel this off get any fingerprints on this. No more than I have to, so we'll pull it down with a piece of paper towel. Right. Now we're going to lay the graphic back on top. And we're going to line up the backing paper on the bottom. And then we're going to have to line up the edge of the graphic so that we have the same amount of space on either side. I want to make sure we have the same space on the top as we do on the bottom and when we have that I'm just going to temporarily lay a little bit of tape on here Thank you. 
across the top here. Keep that top edge from sliding around. All right, now we want to make sure we got our bottom lined up and we have our sides lined up. The sides are lined up on the top. So now, what we're going to do I'll lift this up here. And peel this back. We're going to take our scissors. Start in the middle here. And smooth it down. Right, and hopefully that's going to get us started on the right path. Now, we need to remove our tape. top side here. Tape it down to the table so it can't move on us. Because what we have now The, the whole thing we can pick up and it's only stuck on that bottom edge. But what we can do since the graphic doesn't come all the way down to this end here, we can go ahead and put a piece of tape on the plexi itself to keep this end from moving. Okay, well, for this I think a squeegee would be much better. And I didn't have a squeegee, so I, I took a piece of foam board, which has a nice flat edge here and it's pretty stiff. So that, that ought to work pretty good as a squeegee. So well, we're going to try that. Alright, so now we 
have the uh, the graphic lined up. We have the first inch already on onto the marquee plexi, and it's taped down. The uh, plexi is taped down so it can't move. So now what we need to do is pull this backing off. Now we got to be very careful when we pull the backing off so we don't let this fall on the plexi and stick. Now even though it's supposed to be very forgiving and you can uh, peel it back up, but I'd rather not have to if I don't have to. So we want to make sure we get all the any dust particles from around the edge here because it only adheres to around the edge because the, the inside is going to be empty. So what we need to do is pull it up and peel this off. And we want to get the corners. And see we've already let it fall down on and I didn't want it to fall down. That won't good. Uh, hopefully it fell down. Now what we need to do is pull out and try to stretch it out so it's going to be hopefully without any wrinkles in it. Now like uh, like you said on arcade skin video, you want to lightly get the inside edge only in case you have to pull it back up. And you want to look at it and it looks like it's laying down pretty flat. So with that, what we're going to do is squeegee it out to the edge. Now you want to get down so you can see the reflection in the light and see if there's any bubbles anywhere. And it doesn't appear to be, so I'm going to go ahead and peel the tape up here. Angle it up in the light here. And it looks pretty good down here, but I do have some bubbles on this end right here. So, let's we'll see if we can squeegee them out. If not, we may have to pull this corner up. big one came out. That's going to be a little bit too close for that to come out. 
So, I'm going to very carefully peel this back up. And squeeze it back down. ones here. Let's see if we can do anything with them. I got a couple little ones right in here, so I'm going to go ahead and peel this side up. like we got some debris under here. Don't know what that came from. Well, that's much better. May not be perfect, but it's good enough for my standards. I think it's going to look fine after I take the, the backing off. It ought to, ought to be just right. So, now we can go try them in the game and see what they look like. Even though the cabinet's not fixed. Well, here is the finished artwork project anyway. The, the marquee fits good. Looks good. So does the monitor bezel and the new control panel. So now all I have to do is get in gear and uh, restore the cabinet and get the cabinet ready. And it shouldn't be too hard of a process depending on what I find. Uh, I have to dig the monitor out and hopefully that's still in good shape. And um, clean the inside the cabinet out, see what it needs, if it needs to be uh, fixed up any, as far as uh, structural wise. Um, and I know I have some wood repair to, to do, and laminate 
uh, where it's delaminated in, in places. But uh, all in all, should be a straightforward cabinet restore, I would think. And of course, the, the marquee brackets uh, they're going to have to be stripped down and painted. Might even try powder coating them. I don't know. And then, of course, I have the the new vinyl for the backstop here. Uh, only thing I don't have is the uh, the lift channel for the marquee, which you really don't need. But I may try to find one. I'm not sure if uh, a sixteenth inch. Uh, Plexi. I'm not sure if one for a pinball machine would work, although it seems like it has a, enough room to where it would probably work. So I might get me uh, one of those and try it. Um, so anyway, I'm very pleased with the way the control panel turned out. And it looks good with the Plexi on it. And the, uh, the new flat molding on the front. So I guess the next video will be uh, when we get started on the cabinet. So till then, that's all from the arcade.